Tonight, several developing stories as we come on the air. The state of emergency right now in Florida. Sheets of rain still coming. The flooding emergencies playing out. The potentially record heat now moving into the east and the wildfires tonight. Also, the Supreme Court's unanimous decision on the abortion pill. And tonight, the retired L.A. Sheriff's deputy missing in Greece amid soaring temperatures. The all-out search and news coming in. A second American is now missing, too. First tonight, new storms now pummeling Florida. Authorities warning of life-threatening and potentially catastrophic flooding. Dangerous driving, high water rescues, residents who say they have never seen this before. And now the extreme heat moving into the east right up the coast, Washington, Philadelphia, New York City. Meantime, that heat helping to fuel a massive wildfire, destroying homes, shutting down a highway. From the air, the images coming in at this hour from Arizona. Tonight, new reaction here after the Supreme Court's unanimous decision today, leaving access to the abortion pill, Mifepristone, unchanged in this country. In many states, women still able to get it through the mail. But what the justices signaled today, leaving the door open to future challenges involving the abortion pill. Tonight, Donald Trump on Capitol Hill, his first visit back since the attack on the Capitol. Republican members of Congress right there with him, including Mitch McConnell, who once said Trump was responsible for January 6th. And tonight, what Donald Trump reportedly said in the meeting about the city that will host the Republican National Convention, saying Milwaukee is a horrible city. Tonight, President Biden with world leaders and the $50 billion loan plan for Ukraine. The president also making news when our reporter asked, will you commute your son Hunter Biden's sentence? Tonight in Russia, the major setback from Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. Russia formally charging him now with espionage. He will stand trial. Tonight, the U.S. saying despite any evidence against him. And tonight in Greece, that urgent search for a retired L.A. sheriff's deputy who had gone for a hike amid temperatures reaching triple digits. And now that word coming in of a second American missing what we know so far. And later tonight, right here, America Strong, the scene at the airport terminal right before passengers even boarded the daughter, the pilot, and her remarkable tribute to her father. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here in a very busy Thursday night. We have several developing headlines as we come on the air tonight. New reaction coming in right now after the unanimous decision by the Supreme Court not to restrict the abortion pill, Mifepristone, for now. They did leave the door open for future fights over the abortion pill. Also potentially record-breaking heat moving into the east now. Wildfires already tonight. And we begin here with the state of emergency right now in Florida. Some parts of Florida flooded by nearly two feet of rain, bracing for up to eight more inches of rain. Tonight, there are warnings of life-threatening and potentially catastrophic flooding. The flash flood threat in effect through tomorrow night. The rain totals climbing in Bonita Springs in South Florida. Dangerous driving. Two people were killed in weather-related accidents in that state. Across the region tonight, families are being told to stay home if they can. SWAT team members rescuing people from flooded homes nearby. Drone video from Miami tonight. Look at this, showing neighborhoods underwater, cars abandoned on flooded streets. Some residents saying they have never seen anything like this before. ABC's Victor Akendo leading us off tonight. He's in Hallandale Beach, Florida. at south of Fort Lauderdale tonight. Tonight, life-threatening flooding in Florida, a state of emergency in multiple counties. Feet of rain already, and it's still coming down. Sheets of rain in Bonita Springs, north of Naples. Visibility near zero on roads. The National Weather Service warning of new catastrophic floods after a tropical fuel deluge that swamped whole neighborhoods in the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area, forcing the shutdown of part of I-95 and stranding vehicles everywhere. A day later, it's still hard to tell where the road ends and the water begins. Crews are pulling that car out of that canal right now. The woman who was driving the car says she didn't realize there was a body of water there. Just look, it's basically even with the street level. She thought she was turning onto another street. Instead, she plunged right in. Not far from there, Leo Alonzo telling me he's towed dozens of vehicles. Does the phone just not stop ringing right now? It's, it just won't go. It just keeps going. One call after another. I don't even answer anymore. Really? I don't even answer. It's too much. Homeowners in this Fort Lauderdale neighborhood trying in vain to keep the water out of their homes. I just bought this house. <laughs> Marcus Vitali has only lived here eight months. Every half an hour or so, I got to go turn it back on to 
pump it out. So I'll be up all night dealing with that. The storms turning deadly in Collier County. Two people killed in a multi-vehicle accident. Here in Hollandale Beach, where the streets are inundated, residents tell me they are preparing for it to get even worse tonight with another round of rain. Let's go to the map from our weather team. A flash flood warning for parts of South Florida, including Fort Lauderdale. Up to eight inches of additional rain possible over the next 24 hours. And the other concern in the east, the heat. Temperatures in the 90s from Atlanta to Philly by Friday afternoon. Some records could be broken. And back here in Hollandale Beach, the ground so saturated, it won't take much for more flash flooding. David Victor Kendo in Florida again tonight. Victor, thank you. And you heard Victor there mention that heat moving into the east, that intense heat already fueling a massive wildfire tonight at this hour in Arizona, destroying homes, shutting down a highway for a time. And Mola Lenghi tonight with the images coming in right now. Tonight, firefighters racing to contain a massive wildfire that destroyed several homes and shut down a major highway near Phoenix. Video showing several buildings on fire near Wickenburg, about an hour northwest of Phoenix. Authorities shutting down Highway 60 in both directions as crews battle the flames from the air and on the ground. Residents on high alert. Pretty yeah. scary last night. I'm thinking, well, we're going to die, go to sleep. The Rose Fire scorching nearly 200 acres, and it's 0% contained. We're trying to do the best we can out there. It's hot. It's really dry. Uh, you can tell with all the wind we're having right now. Much of the Southwest baking under record-breaking heat. Phoenix has seen triple-digit temperatures every day for nearly three weeks. Well, David, it is dangerously dry in the Southwest with no significant rainfall in the Phoenix area since April 1st. And now an excessive heat warning is in effect through the weekend, David. Mola Lenghi tonight. Mola, thank you. Now to the Supreme Court and the abortion pill Mifepristone. Tonight, new reaction here after the court's unanimous ruling early today to leave access to the abortion pill unchanged. In many states, women still able to get it through the mail. But the court leaving the door open for future fights over the pill. ABC's Terry Moran at the court tonight. Tonight, a unanimous Supreme Court has upheld access to the widely used abortion pill Mifepristone for now. All nine justices found common ground in rejecting an effort by anti-abortion rights medical organizations and individual doctors to roll back the FDA's regulations that provide access to the drug for millions of American women. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who wrote the opinion for the court, noted, the plaintiffs have sincere legal, moral, ideological, and policy objections to elective abortion and to FDA's relaxed regulation of mifepristone. But that's not enough, the court ruled, because the plaintiff doctors failed to show that they were personally demonstrably injured by the law. That's a bedrock requirement of constitutional law known as standing to sue. And the doctor's moral qualms don't qualify, Kavanaugh emphasized, writing, Those kinds of objections alone do not establish a justiciable case or controversy in federal court. Kavanaugh also warned that if these doctors could bring a court case challenging federal law, so could others, posing this hypothetical. The government repeals certain restrictions on guns. Does a surgeon have standing to sue because he might have to operate on more gunshot victims? Abortion rights advocates welcomed the ruling. Hugely relieved that the court threw the case out, but frankly angry that we ever were there to begin with. But they know the court has left this controversy open for future fights. Medication abortions account for approximately 63% of all abortions in the United States, and today's ruling means that in most states where abortion is legal, women can still receive the pill by mail and without seeing a medical provider in person first. But there are currently 14 states with a near total ban on all abortions, including the use of this pill, mifepristone, medication abortions. In addition, five more have taken steps to restrict the practice of prescribing abortion pills by telemedicine or delivering the pills through the mail. Anti-abortion rights activists today vowed to keep up their fight. It was disappointing, but it's not the end. We'll be out here again. And it's not over yet, David. In his opinion, Justice Kavanaugh opens the door. He says there may be other plaintiffs who could bring a suit, though he doesn't specify who. And three states, Idaho, Kansas, and Missouri, have already sued the FDA. They say that Mifepristone interferes with their state laws, impacts their state budgets. And that case could be back here at the Supreme Court within a year or two. David? Terry Moran, who was on the air with me as this decision came down early today. Terry, thank you again tonight. Now to the race for president tonight. Donald Trump back on Capitol Hill today. His first visit back since the attack on the Capitol. Republican members of Congress right there with him, including Mitch McConnell, who said in the wake of January 6th that Donald Trump was responsible. 
And tonight, what Donald Trump reportedly said in the meeting about the city set to host the Republican National Convention, saying Milwaukee is a horrible city. Rachel Scott on the Hill again tonight. Tonight, Donald Trump appearing on Capitol Hill for the first time since his supporters stormed the building on January 6th, meeting with Republican congressional leaders. We have great unity. We have great common sense. Some Republican lawmakers sounding starstruck. He saw me in there and he was like, hello, Marjorie. He's always so sweet and uh, recognizes me. And he said, are you being nice? He was joking. Are you being nice to Speaker Johnson? And I said, eh. And he, he said, OK, be nice to him. And I nodded my head. Even Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, who once called Trump practically and morally responsible for January 6, today shaking his hand. Behind closed doors, Trump reportedly attacking the city of Milwaukee, where Republicans are holding their convention next month. Punchbowl News reporting Trump told lawmakers, Milwaukee, where we are having our convention, is a horrible city. When word got out, House Republicans rushing to offer explanations. Some saying Trump was specifically talking about crime in Milwaukee, while others claimed he was actually talking about election integrity. Trump later insisted he was talking about both. We saw those top Republicans rally behind Donald Trump today, but we also heard from another Republican, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was the vice chair of the January 6th committee. She insists that Donald Trump and his collaborators will be defeated, going on to say, quote, that history will remember the, quote, shame of people like Leader McConnell who enabled them. David. Rachel Scott live on the Hill. Rachel, thank you. President Biden, meanwhile, with world leaders, news tonight on Ukraine and on the president's son, Hunter Biden. Our reporter asking the president, will you commute your son's sentence? ABC Selena Wang traveling with the president in Italy. Tonight, President Biden and Ukraine's President Zelensky signing a historic security agreement to bolster Ukraine's defenses for 10 years, bringing it closer to NATO and sending a stark message to Vladimir Putin. He cannot wait us out. He cannot divide us. And we'll be with Ukraine until they prevail in this war. The U.S. and its G7 allies also agreeing to loan Ukraine $50 billion to buy weapons and help rebuild, a loan to be repaid using interest on frozen Russian assets. Another reminder to Putin, we're not backing down. While overseas on the world stage, Biden speaking publicly for the first time about his son Hunter's conviction on federal gun charges. I'm extremely proud of my son Hunter. He has overcome an addiction. He's one of the brightest, most decent men I know. Biden today reiterating what he told David, that he has ruled out pardoning his son. I asked him if he's also ruled out shortening Hunter Biden's sentence with a commutation. Mr. President, would you commute Hunter's sentence? The president's answer, no. David, President Biden there again saying he would not pardon his son or commute his sentence. Then tomorrow, President Biden is back on the world stage with a focus on Ukraine, but he's also meeting with Pope Francis. David? Selena Wang in Italy. Selena, thank you. In Russia tonight, the major setback for Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. Russia formally charging him with espionage now. He will stand trial. The U.S. tonight saying the move comes despite any evidence against him. Here's Martha Raddatz. Tonight, it is official. A major setback for Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, who will now face trial for espionage, indicted with absolutely no evidence presented on charges he was spying for the CIA, charges the U.S., his family, and employer vehemently deny. The 32-year-old Gershkovich has already spent more than a year in a Russian prison while appealing the charges. He was arrested in March of 2023 while on a reporting trip outside of Moscow. The last time he was seen in court, keeping a positive attitude. How are you even? Today's indictment laying out specific allegations for the first time, accusing Gershkovich of gathering secret information about a Russian facility that produces and repairs military equipment. Gershkovich's parents fled the Soviet Union, settling in the U.S. before he was born. His mother telling ABC News recently she has faith the administration is doing all it can. We know that the U.S. government is taking Evans' case very seriously, so we are optimistic. While this is difficult news, it is likely the only way Evan will ever be released. Vladimir Putin has never agreed to a prisoner swap 
until Americans are tried in court. And David, even then, as you know, there is no guarantee. Yes, David? Martha Raddatz on this story for months for us. Martha, thank you. In Greece tonight, the urgent search amid searing heat for a retired L.A. sheriff's deputy who had gone for a hike. And there is news coming in of a second American now missing, too. Here's Kenny Whitworth. Amid blistering heat across Greece that has shuttered schools tonight, a desperate search for a California man, one of three tourists who recently vanished. 59-year-old Albert Calabay, a retired sheriff's deputy from L.A. County, was vacationing on the rugged island of Amorgas. Greek police now studying this CCTV footage obtained by a news outlet appearing to show Calabay dropping items off in his car before heading off for a hike. He was on um, a well-traveled path and he was meeting a friend at the end of the path and he was continuing on his path when somebody saw him an hour later. He was last spotted at 11 at a refreshment stand along the trail, but he never reached the other side. The heat later soaring into the mid 90s and today temperatures in Athens hitting 107. An experienced hiker, Calabay has been traveling to Greece for years. His friends and family now joining the search. You know, it's a four hour trail or a five hour trail. They should have been able to see him on the trail by now. And David, we're also just now learning from Greek media that another American man has gone missing, a 55 year old. It happened on Tuesday on the small island of Mathraki. So now a search is also underway for him as well. All David. of this during incredible heat there. Kena Whitworth tonight. Thank you, Kena. When we come back here, the scathing Department of Justice report tonight on the Phoenix Police Department, what the report reveals about drivers who were arrested. And here in the Northeast at this hour, the explosion at an apartment building. They're trying to figure out what kind of device set this off. Tonight, a new and scathing report from the Justice Department involving the Phoenix Police Department finding repeated civil rights violations. The DOJ finding, quote, systematic problems, finding that officers too often use deadly force. Officials saying the department discriminates against people of color. Black drivers are 144 percent more likely to be arrested or cited for low level moving violations. When we come back here in the Northeast at this hour, the explosion rocking an apartment building, the FBI on the scene trying to determine what kind of device was used to set it off. To the index and tonight, FBI bomb technicians are trying to determine the type of device that set off an explosion inside a Bridgeport, Connecticut apartment building. 20 families were able to get out. The city's mayor tonight saying there was extensive damage to the front of the building. Tonight, a person of interest is now in custody. When we come back here tonight, the scene at the airport, what the pilot said before passengers even boarded that suddenly had everyone cheering for someone standing right there. Finally tonight, the pilot and the tribute to her father. That's Michael Savage right there, the operating manager of maintenance for United Airlines at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Standing there, his daughter, the captain, Julie Savage. He's been a United mechanic for nearly 46 years, and Julie, as a little girl, always dreamed of becoming a pilot, flying her dad's planes. For years, her father always there for her, encouraging her to do it. She would become a pilot for the same airlines, United. And for more than a decade now, her father, Michael, the maintenance supervisor, would come to her gate every morning to kiss her goodbye before her flight. Well, yeah, have a good flight. All right, Dad, love, love you. you. Bye, Bye, take care. That father proudly telling the passengers their pilot, that's my daughter. My daughter is the captain on the airplane. It was always her goal, but you know. That is so sweet. I feel safe in her face. Believe me, she'll do a good job. And so tonight, after 46 years, that plane mechanic, that proud father, now retiring. And it was his daughter's turn to say goodbye at the gate. Hello, everybody. I am your captain today. My name's Julie Savage, and this is my dad, Mike Savage. My dad has been with United for 45 years. He started out loading bags on the ramp. Right. Worked his way up to operating manager here at Chicago O'Hare now for maintenance. I'm super proud of him. He sacrificed a lot for me, loves me, supported me through all of my endeavors to become a pilot. And I'm here at United today because of him. And it's such an honor to recognize you, Dad. I love you. United documenting the moment and right here tonight. Hi, David. Michael, that father and mechanic. I'm certain that Julie will be able to con uh, continue our family legacy. So all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Also here, the captain, his proud daughter, Julie. Hi, David. And her message for her father is Father's Day. 
Dad, I just want to tell you, happy Father's Day. I love being your daughter, and I love us working together, and I'm really going to miss you when you retire. The captain saluting her dad on Father's Day. Safe flight. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.